Welcome to another CMC podcast. Today we're going to continue in our series of Meet the Instructor. And joining us today, we've got Fred Salazar. You want to say hi, Fred? Hey, how are you guys doing out there? So, Fred, what got you involved in the emergency services? Um, actually, it goes way back to when I was a kid. I grew up in the uh, the seventies when uh, the TV show Emergency was very popular, and uh, as a kid, I grew up wanting to be a firefighter and stuff like that. And uh, lucky enough, I was able to to follow all the way through with it. I had a lot of support from friends and family, and um. Went through a, a fire academy and a junior college, went through paramedic school, and then um, I got hired with uh, an industrial fire department for a large uh, petrochemical company in Southern California and, and worked as a uh, full-time industrial firefighter for about seven years um, in the Los Angeles area and um, kind of wanted to get out of the area, wanted to move towards the mountains, so I uh, started taking some tests in, in Colorado and got hired by a, a metropolitan apartment out here about 25, 26 years ago. Oh, that's excellent. Yeah, and that's kind of cool that you got a background in both industrial and municipal because they're, they're, uh, they're kind of different animals, huh? Oh, they're, they're very uh, different animals as opposed to uh, having big pieces of steel structure to tie off to versus having to deal with trees and rocks and bushes and, and stuff like that. But um, it gives me a pretty solid background in, in both worlds and kind of has really helped develop me as an instructor um, in, in delivering classes for CMC. So now the question everyone's going to want to know, being that you brought up emergency, can you do the Johnny flip top of the... Uh, of you, you know, <laughs> that, was, that was actually something we were taught in paramedic school, but then uh, one of our instructors told us a story of them doing that in the middle of the street and he got one of the flip tops in his partner's eye and kind of messed up the entire <laughs> the entire scene. Whoops. So, yeah, so why don't you tell us a little bit more about your, you know, your career in the fire service then. So, what about, especially like where you're at now. I know you just had a promotion, if I recall. Yeah, yeah. I, uh, I drank a little bit of the Kool-Aid and, and got <laughs> promoted to lieutenant. Um, I'm assigned to our heavy rescue uh, program. In my town, we cover roughly about 200 square miles. We have uh, about 500,000 people. Um, we have everything from uh, Pikes Peak Mountain to the plains of Kansas and everything in between in my response area. Um, and like everything else, we're an all-hazards fire department. In, in the time I've been with my agency, I've had the uh, opportunity to rotate through uh, all of our specialty programs. So I, I've been in our hazardous materials program. Um, I've been in our high angle rescue program. This is my second time in our heavy rescue program. Um, I've done, done our wildland program and, uh, I was, I'm still part of our tactical paramedic program, which, uh, we provide paramedic services for the local SWAT teams. Um, you know, and out here in, in Colorado, our all hazard is, uh, Urban type of rescue, rural mountain rescue, confined space, swift water, dive rescue, ice rescue, uh, trench building collapse. Uh, I think the only thing that we're missing here is avalanche and earthquake type stuff um, that we see in some of the other places. But you know, pretty much what you would expect from a, a metropolitan city. Um, prior to that, I, I like I said, I worked for an industrial fire department and. That's where I got my start with CMC is um, I had gone through training with another uh, rescue agency. We did a fair amount of confined space work, and I decided to take a uh, rope class from CMC, and the instructor at the time found out about my background, and CMC was developing their confined space rescue program. So myself, Wayne Chapman, and a few other people worked on putting together the uh, confined space program for CMC and developing uh, the first manual. And currently, you and I and a handful of other people are working on the third version of the confined space manual, uh, hopefully coming out some point next year. Yeah, so when you got started, that was the early days of confined space rescue, and most people didn't even realize that it was, in fact, a specialty. Uh, very, very much so. It was back in the day when we used steel carabiners, uh, brake bar racks were 
the tool of choice. It's when um, we did a uh, tension main, tension belay. So some people now call it twin tension or mirrored system. So it's, it, things have come full circle again um, <laughs> where we had to back everything up. And if you used uh, any aluminum or alloy products, uh, you pretty much got kicked out because only recreational climbers used aluminum al and alloys. Oh, how things have changed, eh? Oh, yes. Thankfully. So, and then, uh, what other specialty teams in? Because I know you've been on, uh, you were on uh, uh, a federal team for a while too, right? Yes, I'm, uh, I've, I've been on the Colorado uh, FEMA Task Force uh, initially uh, around 9-11. I was assigned to the task force as a search specialist. Um, our department took some time off from that and... Uh, we got back into the program uh, about 10, 12 years ago, and I currently serve as a, a medical specialist uh, for Colorado Task Force One. And, you know, as, as we're recording this, I'm tracking a hurricane that may uh, impact Florida, and I'm coming up on rotation, so <laughs> trying to see if I'll be shipping out for a couple weeks or not. Yeah, and and this is that not the first time you've uh, you've hit hurricane country, correct? No, it's uh, we do a lot of hurricane work in Florida, Louisiana, uh, some of the Carolinas because we're in uh, the center part of the nation. Um, we may not be the first ones there, but we're the second and third teams that show up usually uh, because we can get to either coast uh, usually within twenty four hours of drive time. So yeah, we're we're pretty active. Oh, well, that's great. So, and you kind of alluded to this a little bit, but uh, when did you actually start at CMC then? Do you, don't, do you remember the year? Oh, yeah. It was uh, slightly after we went from gold line to static Kermanel ropes. Um, so, it was about 1994 uh, is when I started. So, because it started in Jim's garage, basically, it's been very much a... Uh, a family, and for some of us that have been with CMC as long as I have, Jim was, he's a philanthropist, and um, instead of selling CMC to another big name company that just wanted our logo, um, he thought about his employees, which are an extension of his family, and he made it an employee-owned company so that, you know, everybody that works there, you're kind of the boss. So um, that's kind of a, a very prestigious place to work for me because of where it's been and where it's going and it's not just a name it's it's actually kind of a, a family very very well said yeah so what all do you teach for cmc then i'm kind of the utility player guy um <laughs> i i can field almost anything uh the two the two courses that, that aren't in my wheelhouse um, as a specialty would be uh, building collapse and trench rescue. You know, obviously those those are hazards that we deal with um, on my rescue team. But, you know, my my area of, of expertise, if you want to call it that, um, really the only experts are guys that are dead and haven't put it on their gravestones. But the areas that I, I, I take pride in are confined space and the rope rescue classes um, because of my background, I have a really good handle on both industrial type rescue as well as urban slash rural rescue, um, whether it be rope and or confined space. Um, I do a lot of the, uh, the specialty classes. So we've done uh, classes in Las Vegas for some of the stage riggers. Um, I've had the ability to, to be involved with those. Uh, wind energy, working inside of large dams. Um, you know, stuff that I'm kind of, I'm kind of honored that I get to teach there because it's a lot of things that most people will never see or experience. And the cool thing is it makes me better as, as not only an instructor, but as a rescuer, because it's a lot of problem solving. Yeah, I agree. Like you and I have had a chance to teach together, you know, at, uh, different, like a couple chemical plants and things like that. And I, I always enjoy teaching with you because with your background in that, I, you know, you really have an extensive knowledge of it. So it's pretty cool to be able to you know, kind of point things out to the teams and help them pre-plan. And you really do an awesome job of that. And you know, I, I've learned a lot from you uh, just working with you there and, and kind of seeing how you do that. Well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, 
what I like doing is is my favorite way of teaching is a team team teach approach where um, whether it's a lecture or we're doing stuff outside hands on is um, you know everybody has a different learning methodology you know some people have to see it some people have to hear it some people have to do it um, and you know I may teach something one way and you as my my fellow instructor comes in maybe shows it just slightly different and you can see the light bulb turn on uh, for the student and that and that's that's what I want. I think that's what any instructor wants. Um, and that's, that's for me, probably one of the most enjoyable moments is when you can see the student actually get it. And, you know, we have a pretty good cadre of instructors. And, um, you know, one thing I've stolen from uh, one of our other instructors, Ethan, is a way of teaching the T method um, when we do a mechanical advantage. And I give Ethan credit the first 10 times, and then after that, it's my idea. And I've shown, <laughs> I've shown that to a lot of people, and they steal it too. And, you know, I tell them, the first 10 times, credit comes to me, and then then it's your idea. <laughs> yeah, because I know in, in the past, I know I've seen you do the clothespin thing and, and some uh, carabiners and different methods. It's pretty cool. Yeah, I, I, I stole the clothespins from Ethan. Uh, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to buy a bunch uh, paint them black and then sell them as uh, tactical educational tools and like charge a million dollars for them or something like that. Exactly. As long as you paint them, then you're set. Yeah, yeah. It has, it has to be tactical black. Exactly. That's so, so, and you kind of alluded to this. Uh, what, what do you enjoy most about teaching? Um, it depends on who you talk to. If uh, you talk to Wayne and some of the other instructors, um, it's the fact that I get to go to different parts of the country and different parts of the world and eat um, because I'm kind of a, I, I love to eat. I love food. Um, but that's my selfish thing. Uh, what I, what I truly enjoy doing is getting people, giving them some pearls, you know, every class, if I just give them one little thing that they take home and one little thing that, Oh, now I understand it. It makes 100% sense to me. But the other thing I, I enjoy doing that I really like is seeing how other people do things because, you know, you've been doing this a long time too. This is a constantly evolving profession and nobody has the right answer. So, you know, we, we borrow and, and adopt things that we learn from other people going, hey, this would be a great application. Um, let's do some testing. Let's see how it works. And maybe we incorporate it into some of the classes we teach based on what the needs are. So for me, it makes me a better rescuer, but it also makes me a better instructor when I get to see how other people do things. Yeah. And, and that makes sense. I agree too. That is you know, some, uh, definitely the nice, you know, some of the best things about teaching out on the road is, you know, it's in interacting with other people and seeing how they do things. Yeah, that's great. So with all the stuff you've uh, you've kind of went through here, you are our, you're a very busy guy. But if you're not teaching, or if you're not at the station, you know what do you do to spend your time, or you know what do you enjoy doing? <clears throat> I've got two teenage children that still kind of like me as a parent, so you know <laughs> they're they're a handful. I'm not they don't know it all yet, and I'm not completely dumb. Um, so I, I do a lot of stuff with them. Being in Colorado, I like to do a lot of outdoor stuff, mountain biking. Um, I got a great dog that I take hiking and stuff like that. So pretty much anything I can do outdoors um, when it's it's nice out and nice can be 20 degrees with snow on the ground, I'll be outside doing something. Yeah, hard to beat the area you're in, that's for sure. Yeah, it's uh, the, the weather, we're pretty lucky that way. So this is really going to be a good question for you here because I know you and I have had some uh, some pretty good talks over the, the years here. So is there anything in tech rescue you have very strong feelings about? Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, there's several things. that I think most instructors will always uh, refer back to the always and never statements. Um, that just doesn't hold water because every situation is a little bit different. Um the one thing I talk to people about quite a bit is um, where they get their ideas, where they get their training and education. There's a lot of a lot of great people that put information out on social media via YouTube. You know, CMC has them. You know, a lot of other educational uh, 
facilities have them, but then there's a whole bunch of stuff out there that's questionable. And, and just because you see it once, um, Hey, that's a great idea. It's like, make sure you know the background. Let's maybe you take it back and do some testing just because you, uh, you see it on YouTube doesn't mean it's going to be latest and greatest. Um, and then that ties into, you know, some of, some of the folks I work with, they'll take a class and they're like, Hey, we got to do this. Well, yeah, it's the latest and greatest. It's the new and shiny, but is it really any better than what we do other than it being brand new? Um, you know, understand the simple, understand the basics and then keep all that other neat stuff as one of the tools in your toolbox. You know, you have to have a really good solid basis before you get into all the technical stuff because when all the fancy gadgets break down, what do you have to fall back on? Right, yeah. I think there was a, a quote and I, I don't I don't know whose it was, but I think is one of the greatest ones out there is you know, some people are so busy trying to learn the tricks of the of the trade they forget to learn the trade. A absolutely. And you know, that, that goes back to one of our uh, instructors, John McKentley, talking about redundancy. Um, I don't know how many paychecks I should have collected from people when I challenged them about having and building redundant systems and coming down to, well, you only wear one harness. You know, one of the, one of the challenges, I think, for any instructors to get people to, to think from beginning to termination not just the end of the rescue but termination um and everything in between um you know not just a to j thinking but a to z thinking all the way to the very end and uh that's what makes us true technicians and specialists uh in, in this technical rescue world and yeah, it's funny you bring up redundancy it's such a hot topic right now we always joke around that you're better off talking religion and politics around rope geeks than you are talking redundancy <laughs> So yeah, I, I think that's a fair statement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it uh, definitely could be controversial. So, so where do you see the, the future? Uh, what do you see as the future in rope rescue or, or technical rescue period? Oh my. Um, you know, it, you and I have been doing this long enough. Everything will come full circle at some point. <laughs> um, you know, back in the day we did tension main, tension belay. Now it's called twin tension system or mirrored system, depending on where you're at and how you learned it. Um, but with the advent of, you know, technology and science, I, I see everything getting smaller and lighter. And there's, there's pros and cons to that. Um, you know, sometimes a rope that's too small, you just can't grip it as well, and it becomes an issue in mechanical advantage. Or it's so small, the knot sets so tight. Um, so we're advancing pretty quick with techniques um, with equipment, but at some point we need to slow down and, and get a balance. Um, so the pendulum stays in the middle and doesn't swing one way or the other. And that, that's the hard thing because you and I are becoming the, the dinosaurs and we have a lot of youngins coming up, but we don't have a whole lot of people in between. Um, right. and so it, it, it's incumbent upon us, the older ones to, uh, share some of the uh-oh moments and some of the information that we've gleaned over our mistakes over the years to help them learn and make make good decisions as they progress through the profession. Well, I think it's kind of cool too, because okay, you, you talk about being able to share some of those experience and making sure other people, because you're kind of one of, a, I guess, a, probably the best way to uh, to classify it be like a harness geek. And so you're, you're usually one of the first guys that gets a prototype harness and you're really good with feedback and you've really had a kind of a hand and a say in the shaping of a lot of the harnesses and, so, and a lot of the equipment over the years that CMC has made. Yeah. And that, that was the benefit of CMC being a small company is, is we could do a lot of that. And as we grow, um, it becomes a little bit more cumbersome to do some of the, uh, specialty things that they did for us as instructors, being too big to do a lot of con uh, customization on like one and two pieces versus that that edge of being that still that smaller company where we can we can undertake some of that. Yeah, yeah but I think I think it's kind of cool that it's a lot of the stuff you've come up with has has found its way into the products that you know that everyone sees. So, uh, I'm I'm just one of many. I mean, yeah. you had Leroy, 
Uh, there's been a handful of instructors, Bruce Parker, um, that we've all made suggestions that over a period of time uh, get put into some of our equipment. And, you know, yeah, it's at the end of the day, it's like, yeah, I had a hand in doing that. And that makes me yeah. feel kind of good. Yeah, that is that is really cool. So anything else you'd like to, to wrap us up with? No, I mean, just, just remember that even as an instructor or as one of the old dinosaurs like us, we're still students. Um, this is a constantly evolving um, profession. You know, we're starting to see some of the bleed over from, uh, from the Sprat and rope access world. We're starting to see some bleed over from uh, arborists and stuff like that. And, you know, don't just take that stuff at face value. Think about how it actually integrates uh, into your system. Um, and again, that A through Z thinking about, yeah, well, it looks good in the one situation that you saw it. Is it going to work all the way through your rescues or is it going to become more of a hindrance for you? Yeah, very good advice, I think. Thanks. So. So, well, hey, thanks for taking the time to uh, sit down and record the podcast here. And uh, thanks to our listeners for tuning in and stay tuned for another CMC podcast.